Hey, what's up, you guys? It's your girl, Dr. Cooper. I'm here with my wonderful co-host. They are here. Of uh, course, you know, Pastor Greg, I'm about to add him to the stream. Dr. J, I'm going to add her to the stream. But we would like for you to tag, share, and invite someone to the conversation, the dialogue, where we discuss matters of the heart, all things relationship, um, the, do, the, look, the, do, the what is it, the... Um, the debacles, the debacles, <laughs> the debacles of relationships, the victories of relationships, um, anything relationship we're talking about it. But we're talking about it from our perspective. Our perspective is that we love God. We serve him. We're in ministry and we have families. And hey, the reality of it is uh, we are born a sin, born into iniquity. And so we have our own sets of challenges when we're trying to date and be Christian and date or, or date and be saved or date and be sanctified, date and be uh, sold out for Christ. It's, it's, it's challenging. Let's say that to say the least. And so um, and then you have life after divorce and then you have a life of uh, being a pastor and being single and fine. That's Pastor Greg. He all mm -hmm. right. He all right. He all, come on now. And anointed at that. And so then you got me and Pastor Jay, me and Dr. Jay. We over here, we, we're accomplished um, women, um, attractive women, if I might say so myself. Amen. And, and we sometimes can meet people who find us to be a bit challenging at times. Or um, I don't know. What would you say, Pastor Greg? Anyway, it's the dialogue. Hey, how are everybody doing? I'm dressed down today, but I still think I'm cute. You are. I'm like a tenderoni today. <laughs> Don't make me play. <laughs> okay, so if I know me, I probably got to unlock something. So, uh, as usual, take over for me, Greg, please. Sure. You know, um, you know, one of the things that um, this week, I was on Clubhouse uh, earlier this week, and um, I engaged a conversation about preferences. And I realized how much people's preferences are getting them in trouble inside of a relationship and even inside of, of uh, potential marriages because a lot of times our preferences come from a selfish place and also even a hurtful place sometimes. You know, and we create all of these preferences. He got to be 6'5", or she got to be uh, 36, 24, 36. You know, or he got to be tall, dark, and handsome, or she has to be long hair and cocoa skin and all this good stuff. It sounds good on the surface, but what we don't realize is that sometimes these preferences are keeping us in a place of not discovering God's desire for our heart romantically. How you feel about that? I agree. Because you know I have I had well I had let me say this. I had a type. And my type is what kept me um, single as well. And I, I, I must say, um, the funny thing about it is that when you really you realize that your type ain't working, mm -hmm. <laughs> or your type is why you're single, or your type is why you basically, hey, it's Dr. J, your type is why you keep having the issues and relationships that you're having, um, that's when you start saying, well, God, not my will, not my choice but your choice. And so I found that in the, in the process of growing and learning that, yeah, I'm going to let God lead the way. Um, me trying to do it, I'm not God and it ain't working. So, yeah. Sometimes we have the best intentions with our preferences. You know what I'm saying? But but what happens is, you know, again, like if a person has some hurt in their life and they have things they have not gotten over, and then they create a preference based upon what they've already experienced. What they're doing is creating a preference as a defense mechanism. They're trying to avoid old pain. But what they don't realize is that you end up creating a preference that will lead you back to the same pain because right. you're wasting your thoughts and you're speaking out of a hurtful place and you have not learned how to overcome that which hurts you. So moving forward, in a new relationship, it's probably going to resemble that old relationship because you made preferences based upon what you had already experienced. And I think sometimes we don't realize that we, we self-sabotage 
ourselves. But then we blame it on the opposite sex. We blame it on the other person when, yes, there's always some accountability to mm-hmm. pass around. But at the end of the day, me telling this person or, or talking about what this person has done to me is not going to lead me into a better relationship or situation. Because what I have proven is that my mind is still in that old hurtful place. My mind is still in that relationship. You know, m- many of us, many of us have been hurt by relationships we were never in. And what I mean is that a lot of times we say, I was hurt or I experienced pain. This mm-hmm. man, this woman hurt me. But looking back on the relationship, there was no relationship. I didn't know this person very long. I'm calling a situationship a relationship. Situation. Or I'm calling just because, and, and I know this is a, this is a Christian-based platform, but I'm calling because we slept together. Right. We was in a relationship. When the reality is, no, you weren't. You're not in a relationship until you and him, him and her, have a conversation. And agree. We say, we're going to move forward together. I agree. I think what happens is, like you said, we basically, we get into these entanglements. Mm -hmm. And then what happens is in the entanglement, um, we literally um, end up doing things out of character. It's kind of like this. You do things out of character and then you be like, okay, God bless my mess. And he's like, wait, you know what? I never told you to do that in the first place. I never told you to get involved into that. I never said that they were the one. See, what I love about God is that he's a God of opportunity. He's a God of chances. He is a God of choices. He's not a a God that forces anything on you. He'll let you see what you need to see. And it is up to you to make the right decisions. Because ultimately, um, yeah, he has a plan for our lives. But listen, it's like a prophecy. You got to put yourself in line to come into agreement with that prophecy. You got to put yourself in line to come into agreement with that particular blessing. If that's what you want, then how are you going to obtain this particular thing in your life when you're really technically, you? can I say it like this? So we're, we want, we meet people, we want to be in relationships, but we're, we're so we're still caught up in something old. Does that make sense? We're yeah. still caught up in um um an old um uh, entanglement situationship, and then you some God introduces you to somebody new, and instead of you cutting off the old, so you can move into the new, and it's not so much as like an overnight thing because here's the problem: we are a microwave society. We mm-hmm. want things right now. Yep. And it's like I've said this repeatedly, time and time again. It's like JG Wentworth. It's my money, and I want it, and I want it right now. You know, and it's like it's I, it's my relationship. I want it, and I want it right now. And it's like, yeah. well, this. How do you know this person is stable? Yeah. How do you know this person is is healed? How do you know this person actually knows how to actually actively, um, effectively communicate what they're going through? Mm-hmm without it being toxic and without it being self-centered and right. without it actually being um, damaging to you. Cause you do know hurt people hurt other people. Mm-hmm. You do know people who are not totally healed from a past relationship will come in and start taking that. Pop- like you said, you said this before you, the listen, you're not, if you're not ready because you're, I'm not, why do I have to pay for what the other person did? And then here's this, if they don't know how to effectively communicate, yeah. accountability is hard for people when you pull them to the carpet. It's like, no, we talked about this before. Right. When you were really into me, hey, Jay, you coming in? When you were really into me, right? right. When you was trying to get my attention and now that you have my attention, um, now you changing what you said before? No, this is what you said. Right. And then so now that you changed your mind, because now you because you figured out, I put it to you like this. 
How many times have you gotten involved with somebody who really just loved the idea of you, but cannot handle the weight of who you are in totality? And then when they figure out that you're really serious about being in a relationship and you give all your attention to them, and then they like all over, they, they didn't want you to see in the beginning that they were really all over the place. Right. They got they got an inbox over here. They got a, a FaceTime over here. You know, they literally been knowing you for quite some time, but now that they, you're still my past the point of locking your phone because you got something right. to hide. Right. You still got right. your phone on silent when I come around because you got something to hide. Right. And here and here lies the problem. When you are not ready, when you have not released the old, you come into relationship sabotaging what can potentially be a blessing. I'm done. Drop my mic. Yeah. I mean, you know, let me. Let me get some, right. You know, but uh, right. But you know what I find too, um, Dr. Constance, is that we a lot of times focus so much on getting someone's attention mm -hmm. that there is no retention. You know, getting someone's attention is easy, but when mm -hmm. I get you, I must have some retention, so some consistency in, in being in your life and you being mm -hmm. in my life. Right. You know, we, we forget that. With a woman, especially now, it, it it might be it might be in the beginning a difficult task for you to get her. It's an easy task for you to lose her. I think as men, we don't realize that the same thing that we do to get her is the same. It, 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 it's not the same thing. It's that and some more. Because this got my attention, right? I have to be, I have to be persistent to get your attention. I have to be consistent to keep your attention. And a lot of times as men, what we forget to do is to is to be consistent in the relationship now. Now we've gotten past the dating phase. I'm with you now. I forget now. I was wilding and dining you. In the dating phase, we was going to Roof Chris, Capitol Grill. We were going to all these places. You were smiling. Conversation was good. I was telling you all about me. You were telling me all about you. When you text me, it was not but about five minutes tops before I text you back. Right. And now inside this relationship, something has changed. Come now on. you're saying, great, I text you. It's taking you an hour, two hours, or all day to respond to my text. Come but on. we all know a person's cell phone is always in their hand. In their hand. Okay. So, so help, the, is, help the people in the back say it one more time. Their, their cell phone is your, your cell phone is always in your hand. <laughs> so my thing is this. There's never, ever an excuse for you not texting somebody back in a reasonable amount of time. Same thing applies for women. Women have to be consistent as well. You know what I'm saying? When I say that women, once they are secure enough to enter a relationship, then it's on them to show themselves that they have those wife qualities. They have those things that they'll take care of your idiosyncrasy. But I'm saying this is after she is secure in the relationship. She now trusts you. She understands that you're not a fly-by-night man, that you are here for her. But I think that before this even gets engaged, men and women, we don't think about this stuff prior to the relationship. Then we get involved in the relationship, and then we act as if somebody threw us for a loop well, the truth of the matter is, no one threw you for a loop. If you don't take some time prior to the relationship and fellowship to develop friendship, you will find yourself wanting to abandon ship because the relationship is terrible. And we don't realize it's terrible because we made it terrible by entering this thing and we're settling for, for company instead of waiting for companionship. Okay, Jay, we need you to chime in, little driving lady. Come on, driving, Miss Daisy. Come on. Come on in here. Come on in, my little chef. <laughs> chef girl, I'll be. 
I'll be fine. No, just wait. <laughs> you know, Goofy, go, girl. We can't hear you. You had your mic off? No, it's on. Can't hear me. Now we can. Yeah, we got we got an echo though. Mm, hold on. Okay, how about now? Wonderful. So okay, great. What what what's your input on that? No, what um what both of you said was spot on. Um, and I'm sorry I'm driving y'all. So I'm just looking kind of every every which way. But what y'all said was spot on about the preferences and um boundaries are so very important and um even what you just said right now i know for me as a woman i am completely turned off by inconsistency me too like if, you, if you can't be consistent i'm turned off in every single way i don't want to talk to you i don't want to deal with you because to me in a relationship the easiest thing to do is to be consistent it doesn't really require much effort just do what you do, you know? And if you are in fact interested and Greg as a man can speak on this, a man will show you when he's interested and you actually speak louder than words, right? So if I have to beg you to be consistent, if I have to beg you to answer my calls, my texts, whatever, the handwriting is on the wall. I just need to read it and stop walking past it. But, and I've, I've been there where I've given people chance after chance after chance, you know, Oh, okay, well, maybe you were busy or maybe you did fall asleep. But at some point, the excuses get old. Like, we're either going to do this or we're not. But sometimes that comes with the preferences that Pastor G spoke on earlier, too, um, because we have to learn to decipher needs from one. Because that person could check off all the boxes, but it right? could have been your wants and not your needs. And so you got what you asked for. You know, so we have to be really careful with these you know, the list of stuff. I'm not saying you don't have your list, but be realistic with that list, though. Like, are these things that you absolutely have to have? And be real and upfront about what you can take. These are boundaries and expectations now. What you cannot, what you need, what you expect, um, et cetera. You know, clear communication. Otherwise, you'll find yourself, like Pastor G said, in a whole situation ship or crying about a relationship that you were never in so yeah yeah you you in a whole like situation debacle and uh i'm gonna be using that word debacle because i like the way it sounds <laughs> no, just, let me stop it because it's a goofy day it sounds like it's my job. This, 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 the relationship the dialogue, right? so, listen. say your word again <laughs> debacle <laughs> <laughs> The whole relationship debacle. Like, wait, I didn't see that coming. Wait, but like you said, I was caught up in my flesh. It was what I wanted, but it wasn't actually what I needed. How many times have we found ourselves in these situations with these ladies, with these men? Oh, let me speak for the men, and I'm going to let you chime in because you are the man. How many times have you found this beautiful woman? You think she's a total package. 36, 24. Oh, 36. Oh, oh she's a brick. And you all like, oh, she all that. She shout pretty. She sit pretty. Mercy. She smell pretty. Come on. But here's the problem. She can't pray. Oh. She shout. Right. She don't know how to pray her way out. Right. She's not consistent on her job. Yeah. She don't keep house. She don't know how to cook. And when I say cook, I mean cook like me and Jay cook. Because Jay over yeah. there being a cleaner. But she can't cook. She she done burned up a scrambled egg. How you burn up a scrambled egg? You know, what? Wait, wait, huh? <laughs> she didn't put she can't put the biscuits on the time in the oven. She ain't made look my I we got I got a lady in, in Reverend Jacqueline and Melton. She made homemade biscuits. I remember that yeah. post. A long time ago, she had all the mix, and I know Jay do too. Make them yeah. homemade biscuits and whatnot, right? And, and I can't make homemade biscuits, but I sure can turn them in the oven and put some hungry jacks in the mm -hmm. oven and not burn them. I can butter yeah. them up real good. You right. some syrup, you want some jam, you want some preserves. You know, you burn the bacon, 
on one side. Yeah. What's wrong with you, baby? Oh, don't ask for no greens. Don't ask for no cabbage. Don't ask for no red beans and rice. Don't you say a northern bean? She'd be like, "What do we gotta go north?" <laughs> No, baby. You say hot water cornbread. She says, so what you want me to do? Take the jiffy and put it, put hot water on it? <laughs> you say salmon croquette. She don't even know what that is. What mm -hmm. salmon? You mm -hmm. eat it at the restaurant, baby. Salmon croquette. Right. Because their parents, it's kind of like this. And I know it sounds funny. It, it's funny. It's cliche. Mm -hmm. But you meet these women and all they are are pretty is all I'm trying to say. There's nothing to the package. There's no substance there, or her in in ministry. All her all her idea is to be a first lady. That's her dream. You know, some girls grow up and they want to be, you know, um, a model. You know, some girls grow up and they want to own own a business, like they want to own a hair salon. I put my hand up. You know, want to own a hair salon. You know, you got some type of aspiration, but all she want to be is first lady. And like, well, baby, do you know what a first lady's job is? To take care of her husband. Do you know what a help meeting is? Mm -hmm. To cover him mm -hmm. in prayer. It ain't just to be pretty and sit on the front row and do women's days events. Right. It ain't just to do no ladies' teas and luncheons. It's to make sure that his meal is cooked before he goes to church because if you know how to cook, he don't want to come home and have to wait for you to cook the meal. The meal needs to be ready before he comes home, which means you should have put that on the night before. So when you get he get home and y'all get out of church, then he gonna need some ministering to. He gonna need some laying on of the hand. Hello, somebody. Yeah, right, Jay. Mm -hmm. I can't get no amens up in here. There is there is a job that a first lady. Yeah, she helps him out in ministry. Yes, she does. We'll never take that away. But at the end of the day, can I ask you a question? It, there is more to being a first lady than wearing a pretty hat. Right. There's more to being a first lady than you running around being a gossiper, spreading uh, uh, spreading uh, gossip and, and putting uh, wedges between the ministry. Woe unto them to spread discord amongst the brethren. Why are you so insecure? What are you so jealous of? What's the problem? Did you not know that your man was attractive when well, you thought you was the only one that thought he was fine? Did you think you was the only one that thought that suit looked good on him? He gonna give some compliments. I suggest you gird yourself up with the full armor of God and get your life and get you together. So when they telling him he fine, he gonna be looking at you like, and ain't she fine too? That's my girl over there. You like my wife? I think my wife is fine too. Give him something to brag about too. Because at the end of the day, there is more to being a wife than just being pretty and sex. Can you do laundry correctly? Do you know how to talk to the people at the dry cleaner? Can you put a button back on the shirt? I don't know. I mean, y'all talk back to me. Tell me something. Tell me if I'm in the bank. I got I got me a good 10 viewers on here. Come on, tell me something. Because at the end of the day, I'm wondering when we pick these. Okay, let me throw us under the bus, right, Jay? I'm going to throw us under the bus. Let's... He fine. He got a six pack. That suit looked good and hanging right on him. And yeah, just like women, men look at hips and all the other stuff, we we, we take a look too. Well, he, is, is he working with? <laughs> don't be so heavenly bound. You ain't no earthly good. Stay house. I'm in the building. Don't don't even go there. <laughs> I ain't trying to go looking for a pig in a blanket. I ain't trying to do all that. I just want to know, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see these four kids over here? Some something working up in here. <laughs> Say ouch. I'm in the building. Come on now. He smell good. Yeah. But guess what? All he know how to do is go to church. He don't know how to be a man. He handpacked by his mama. His mama always in your business or his sisters or somebody. Um, He don't really keep a good job. He thinks that the church is supposed to take care of him or you supposed to take care of him because we do it. I'm sorry. We pay attention to all that stuff too. I don't want to date. That's my, okay, can I, my hand to God. Tell me if I'm wrong, Jay. I've dated pastors, and some pastors don't have no job. And I'm wondering, they ain't got no investments. And I'm wondering, who's going to take care of us? 
Because, honey, I've been taking care of me and four kids. They grown now. Yes, they are. But, baby, what's going to happen? You, do you have a business? Because I'm a help me. I come to help you meet the goals. I come to help you meet um your, the will of God for your life. And then you help me accomplish mine. We're a team. There is no I in team. So it's not an I, me, I, 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 I thing. You understand what I'm saying? So what do you have planned for us? Because a woman will submit to a man that she can trust that has a plan that is about his business and consistent too. So, I mean, I know we look at him. We go, oh, he got a nice car, but it's the note on time. Oh, he had a nice clean place. Okay, but do he own it? Is, is it a mortgage or is it rent? I don't probably with it being rent. But here's the thing. We have expectations as well. We look out for things as well. And so at the end of the day, I mean, I could be wrong. Y'all chime in and tell me something. Thank you, D. Thank you, Tony, for coming because I know I got other viewers on here and I ain't trying to offend nobody. When you come back and you watch it, just tell the truth, shame the devil. The first part about being free and delivered, the first step that you need to do is admit it because God can't fix it and help you with it if you don't admit, admit that you have a problem. If you sitting around here acting like you got it all together, I need to work on that. You need to work on your finances. You need to work on your credit. You need to work on your cleaning skills. You need to work on your cooking skills. You say hey, it ain't. I've been getting my nails and feet done. I say this all the time since I was a kid. But at the end of the day, this ain't the end all beat all. If my bills ain't paid, if there's no food in my refrigerator, if I ain't got no soap to wash my tail with, no toilet paper to wipe my tail with, then what am I doing? I'm not. I'm not doing anything. I'm just pretty and I serve no purpose. But thanks be to God who causes us to triumph. <laughs> and then that's the, the, internet, the huh? internet. The internet is not doing us any favors Come on. Um, in the department of finding quality men and quality women. Because the, you have a lot of people who are known as quote unquote a relationship expert or whatever that should really be quiet because talking about you know high quality men or, or, or high value women as you want to call it what we're calling high value or high quality is first of all value and quality is not the same thing you know um value is really about what is what is valuable to me the value that I have ascribed to something. You know what I'm saying? Quality is determined by society. And my thing is, we have not determined for ourselves what is valuable to me. As a man, what in a woman is valuable to me? I gotta quickly get past her wrapping paper and ask myself, what's the gift that's inside of her? And a lot of men don't know how to do that. And we end up thinking that a high value woman is a woman who wears high heels or a woman who's her, her hair is slave. She's a diva, uh, so society says. And those things are fine, they're fine. But that does not make her a, a high quality woman. The same way seeing a man with a nice suit, his hair is, you know, a nice little fade and taper, that does not make him a high value or high quality man. My thing at the end of the day, we have to first of all ask ourselves, what do I need at this place in my life? Mm -hmm. At this stage in my life, what's important to me? What are my priorities? Am I taking care of my own priorities? Do I have my own stuff together? Now, what do, as a man do I want in a woman that can be of assistance to me? Like the Bible says that that um, uh, her 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 husband's her husband's heart does safely trust in her, and he shall have no lack of gain. Well, I have to interpret that and say, you know what? If a Proverbs thirty one, if that's the kind of woman that my heart can safely trust in her, then for me, it takes what for me to be able to trust you. I have to ask myself that. And then when I, I, I look for women, I have to look for that in a woman. 
a responsible woman, a woman who understands her purpose, a, a woman who has her stuff together. If she rents or she owns, do you know how to keep a house? You know, are, are you neat? Are you presentable when I come and pick you up? Well, I'm not talking about um, does she have all the best of the best. I mean, it, it, does she have class? You know, th does she know how to be sexy but tame her sex appeal? You Wait know what a I'm minute. My Wait thing minute. is, what is important to me as a man? I have to know that. I have to know that right, right now. <coughs> The most important thing to me is what? Peace. So I can't be with anybody who disturbs my peace. So therefore, why would I entertain a woman who's ratchet? We pick individuals and then we expect them to cater to what we know they aren't. <clears throat> and then when they can't, we get upset as if they have done us a disservice. No. You self-sabotage and you chose a man or you chose a woman that you knew <clears throat> did not meet, was not suitable for you. You knew that. They didn't look like what was suitable for you. They carried themselves in, the, in a manner that you know is not suitable for your life. But what do you do? You move past those red flags. Come on, can I run out the room? I just want to run out the room. I'm, I'm about to I run out this room. Let me, let me tell you something. When you said, um, when you said, is she presentable? Can she be beautiful, sexy? Here's the key word, but classy. Yeah. What is it tactful? Is it over the top? In other words, we were just talking about this, me and my bishop, Bishop and Bishop Craig Jackson in Seattle. We were just talking about this. And, and the crazy thing about it is we find that women eat at a book. I just felt God. We find that women in the church want to take animal stick, want to take on the uh the personality of the hot girl uh in on love and hip hop. You want to be a Atlanta housewife. But coming mm -hmm. to the church, you want to wear the see-through mesh, right? Yeah. Okay, wear the see-through mesh. But what you got on up under there? Because yeah. you can have on a whole black slip, and we won't have a problem with it. Cover up. Yeah. And what's important is that you understand that the Bible declares, woe unto them that causes another man to stumble. Do you know that you have become a stumbling block? Yeah. Not just for him. So you going out to dinner, you want to be a hot girl. Is it for him? Because now he feels like I can't take you around nobody because you don't know you don't know the cutoff. And then where's your measuring stick? You get what I'm saying? Like, where in your mind did it, did you not say I want to be sexy, right. but classy, but for him only? Right. See, it's so funny because you were talking to me. Remember, you were like, you look like a hot girl. And I was like, but did you notice my shirt way up here? I can't do nothing with most oh, of this. But you was classy, though. Exactly my mm -hmm. point. Like, there is a time and a place for everything. I've always been funny about undergarments. I'm going to do something with Tony because I really believe that women need to get back to undergarments. It's funny to me that you want to run around here talking about you a holy woman of God, but you ain't got no pantyhose on. And you, I mean, I don't care about pantyhose. Let me take that back. Let me, let me reiterate that. Mm -hmm. But you don't have an undergarment on. Because you know you walked out the door and you felt yourself jiggling. We're not making an LL Cool J video here. Okay. It's jiggling, baby. Oh, baby. It's jiggling. That's for his eyes only. Right. So when I go out to dinner and I'm on the first date or I'm on the second date or whatever, I don't have a ring yet. Right. I do want you to look at me, though. Right. So I'm, I might get a little do a peekaboo cleavage, you know. I'm I'm almost 50, you know what I'm saying? So peekaboo cleavage. What's peekaboo mm -hmm. cleavage? Peekaboo, like now you see it, now you don't. It just right. all depends about your angles. It's angles, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So I ain't so heavily bound, I ain't so early good, you know what I'm saying? Because right. I'm, you know, I don't know what I'm working with. Right. It's also like that for men too. 
Why did your shirt need to be so tight on your arms where it looks like you're about to do an incredible Hulk on me? I don't need that either. Because I want, I don't want to have to tell old girl off, like, yeah, he with me, boo. Right. Quit trying to signal him. Quit trying to give him your number. Right. Look, look, the paper, here you go. <laughs> no, we're not doing that. Right. Not, not, see, God delivered me from me. You get that clear. Yeah. I, I'm not always sanctified. I need I need Jesus all day, every day. And so, yeah, we're going to fight, boo. Whether it's with this mouth or whether I'm going to be like, no, uh-uh. Come on, we're not, we not eating here. Yeah. We're not doing it. Because if I got, if I have to lay hands on her unaware, she, get your life. Get on over there. Get on over there. Because people don't have any morals. They don't have any standards. And they don't have any kind of ethnical balance. It's like you. I, I shop online all the time. I love cute clothes. I got a bunch of them in the closet for when I get a man. You know what? <clears throat> Christian singles are oftentimes either very good at being Christian and bad at being single or they're very good at being single and horrible at being Christian. And my thing is this. If you don't know how to have a healthy balance of both, you're going to have problems. My thing is, I am somebody's pastor. But at the end of the day, I still understand how to have fun. There are many facets of who I am. You know, I, I am this at church. I am this at the concert. I am this as a basketball coach. I am this a as a counselor. I am this as a mentor. I am this, you know what I'm saying? I, I wear lots of hats. Now, again, it's all the same person, and neither of them will compromise themselves. But at the end of the day, a lot of times we, like for some who are very heavy on the Christian side but don't know how to be single, you find yourself always talking about church. You cannot have a conversation, a regular conversation. You know, you don't know how to answer simple questions. Like, how are you? Don't tell me you're blessed and highly favored. I already know that. Yeah. I'm asking you about your day. How, how are you? You know, or no one wants to sit at dinner with somebody and, and have an hour conversation about church. They don't. So that's what I do. That's what right. I do. So I, I want you to I'm talk like to me about, a, about current affairs. Yeah, current events. Talk to me about how you feel about folks getting this COVID shot. Talk to me about what Congress getting ready to pass. How you feel about that? Talk to me about things that affect us. Talk to me about things that affect our everyday life. Don't just don't just talk to my spirituality. Talk to my psychology. Talk to my cognitive functions. Talk to my intellect. And that's what we don't know how to do because all we know how to do sometimes is talk church. Now, you do have the other extreme where you're heavy on the single side and light on the Christian side. <laughs> so now your conversation is too worldly. Right. Now, now you're having inappropriate conversations. You want to sit here and talk about uh, talk about sex, and we're not on that level yet. We're, you know, we're not in a relationship yet to even think about having a conversation about marital sex. But now we're talking about this on a second, on a first or a second date. Are we having conversations that are, are, are too intimate for right now, or we're using vernacular that is not really appropriate for any setting? But again. Everyone is on different levels, spiritually and socially. And my point is, is that in order to really be a well-rounded believer, a well-rounded person, you really have to have a healthy balance of both. You know, I, I know who I am in Christ. Right. But guess what? I also know who I am, not in the world, but to the world. You right. know what I'm saying? I don't have to be of the world, but I am in it. Right. So I do have some responsibilities to other people who are in it. 
you know, I do do some things that are uh, worldly. However, they are not sinful. You know what I'm saying? Like we can we we use the word secular a lot, as if secular means bad. But secular means non-religious. So anything that's not of a religious nature is secular. Doesn't mean it's bad. Because I mean, listen, when Lauren Hill come through, I'm gonna go see it. When 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 Dave Pollock to come through, I'm gonna go hear him. You know that when, when when Floyd she back in the day came through, I wouldn't have heard him. I I like R and B. I do. I love gospel R and B. At the end of the day, depending upon what day of the week it is, I might be you know riding to work, and, and, and I might have you know Kurt Franklin playing today, but tomorrow I might have that Nas Illmatic album playing. Well, it's cool how I feel today. But you can't tell me I ain't saved. You, you can't, can't tell me I don't love God. But we allow people sometimes to define us for us. Yeah. And it does not just affect us in life. It affects us in relationships. Because we go into these things not knowing who we are. Okay. So I want to address Mrs. Kiera O'Hara um, Henson's comment. And she says, um, the mothers of old were postured in the house of God mm -hmm. and they taught the women in, the, in that house. Most of these mothers have transitioned on to glory. It's easy to talk about what's wrong with these women mm -hmm. when those mothers of old taught them. So here, let me address that. So if this, I don't know if this is your first time being on, but I am an advocate of the mothers of the church. That's why I do the fragrance of a woman. I'm big on giving honor where honor is due. And that is who taught me how to do the undergarments. What we're talking about now is common sense. It ain't so much about teaching people. You know what's a club dress. You know what a club dress is. We're talking about uh, discreet, being discreet, being modest in your clothing. We're not talking about new converts here. This, this platform, we're talking about people who know better and supposed to do better. When I was a child, I reasoned as a child. But when I became older, I put away childish things. And so here's the problem with being in the church. We're not talking about new converts, baby. That, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about people who know better and supposed to do better. It's kind of like this. You cannot still be on milk and call yourself being mature. Maturity has to kick in at some point of your walk. I know we say people sit on, on the pew for years and years and they don't grow. But at one point, do you not take on the character and the attributes of the people that you attend church with every Sunday? Well, at one point, do you not create <laughs> relationships with people who you admire as opposed to talking about them? We're not talking about just um, teaching uh, new converts. That's not what that's about. That's totally different. We're talking about, I've been in church, I do church, I'm doing this every Sunday, I sing on the praise team, I sing in the choir, I'm an usher, um, I'm on the deacon board, all of these things, I'm on the mother's board, all of that. And it ain't just a, it ain't just a denomination. These are things that people do um, because this is what's in them. We're talking about changing your mind, talking about changing the way that you view things because you know better. Now, new convert, baby, we, when the mother, I was a new convert, my hand up sky, and I was her. My skirt, do you remember I talked about that, Greg? I had the leopard skirt with the leopard hat, with the leopard platform, the leopard mini skirt, and the mothers of the church saw me trying to get to church with my four small children, and they pulled me to the side, and uh, they said, baby, just keep coming. And then I kept coming, and every Sunday, when I kept coming, I got something new to put on. I got a new dress that was past my knee. Um, one mother gave me a whole bunch of pantyhose and said, baby, these is expensive. And they were. They were at the time it was important. Capwell was still open at the time. So I, I had them little shears. And they, they sell them at JC Penney's. They like the shimmer shears. And so I had some shimmer shears and looked at the tag on them. At the time, they were $16 a, 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 a pair. And I don't even know how much they are right now. The shimmer shears. And um 
Yeah, and then one mother gave me undergarments. That's how I learned about the undergarments. But my mother always wore a girdle, but there's a difference. There's a difference. And so we're not talking about new converts, we are. We're talking about when you know better, you do better. And some people don't know better. And that's where God, God, God's grace is grace. He, he has grace. We're talking about relationship matters, dating. Um, if you don't know, that's what we do this for because we want to enlighten you on some things and we want to have a real life conversation about it because the reality of it is everybody is like you just said, everybody, what we don't do, we either super single and we're loose trying to be saved or we're super saved and don't know how to talk. You understand what I'm saying? Don't know how to have a conversation. We can't even talk about a basketball game because, oh, that's the devil's playground. Wait a minute. Hold on. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. If one of them ball players ran up in, in inside of the restaurant where you was at and he was single, can't tell me you wouldn't let him take you out and say he's a multimillionaire. Now, how are you going to have that conversation? Tell me how you're going to conduct yourself. Because if you don't learn, you won't know. We all got to grow from, at some point, we got to grow up. And at some point we got, if we go, you want to stay single, fine, stay the way that you are. But we got to learn how to effectively communicate. We got to get healed before we go into the relationship. Is Jay waiting to come in? What do you keep my girlfriend? You got, you got to learn how to effectively communicate. You have to learn how to a problem solve. You got to know that every time somebody gives you some advice, you're not being attacked. Because it's wisdom. She's your friend. If nobody wouldn't have caught me, baby, you didn't want to see me. I can I can put up some pictures when I'm done by my 20 year old tire, honey. My and I'm talking about late 20s too, 27, 26, 28, 29. I, I hadn't arrived just yet. And so I'm not judging anybody for what they want to wear. You wear what you want to wear because I sure didn't buy it. But I tell you what, if I want a husband. If I want to be respected as a lady, a woman of God, um, and, and also, listen, be heard. Because oftentimes men don't hear you past what you got on, past what you present. I might not, listen, I might not articulate the way he articulates, and I'm not supposed to. Because where I'm weak at, he going to be strong. And where he's strong at. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Where I'm weak, he's going to be strong. And where he's weak at, I'm going to be strong. And we're going to build each other up together because we don't want to stay single forever. But the reason why most of us are still single in the body of the Christ, it ain't, it ain't just because something we have done. Sometimes we don't want to own up to what we've done wrong. They, Dr. J posts all of these wonderful quotes all the time. And I promise you, sometimes I'll be like, my sis is the bomb. My sister, the, uh, Pastor Greg, he, he makes his own commentary. He got a whole dissertation sometimes. You're like, okay, this is way too much to read, Greg. But let me get I'll you. Just write the book. Sorry to interrupt, but proceed. Proceed. We right here. You got Jay, you got me. Can we just get a book out of this? Because at the end of the day, you stay the same because you want to stay the same. People fear change. People fear it. But when you get to a certain age in your life, when you're like, okay, God, I keep picking wrong. And so you said this in the beginning of last year. We've been doing this for you now, y'all. <laughs> and we're on the Divinely Me channel, right? We on TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We ain't going to talk about it. We're going to be about it. But anyway, because y'all know I'm Google. But here, here's the thing. You got all of these people, and like he said, Everybody don't know what they're talking about in relationships. I, my, my coach, I love Coach David. David Burris, I promise you, he's going to teach you well. And he's going to articulate it. He's going to give you scripture to back it up, just like my friend Greg, Pastor Greg. Um, just like Pat, uh, Dr. J. I keep wanting to call you a pastor. God must got something in store for you. Just like Doc, uh, Dr. J. You know what I'm saying? You got people who've been through the relationship, been through the divorce, survived the divorce, know what we did wrong, and can help you not make the same mistake. The issue is that it's kind of like this. We can lead you to the water, but will you drink it? I can either give you the fish 
or I can show you how to fish. If at some point in our lives, well, I'll be super serious because I don't ever, well, sometimes it's necessary, but at some point in our life, we have to realize we need help. We're not making the right decisions anymore. And can't always blame God because he gives us the power to choose. He shows you the red flags. He took that they, they're not talking right. They're fun, they're fundamentally wrong for me. But they fine. But he smelled good. But she thick. She got them lips. Whatever. You know, whatever, whatever floats your boat, whatever it is. You got to admit sometimes when you're wrong and you need help. So, Kiara, I hope I answered your question. And I pray to God it wasn't offensive. I don't. I never want to offend anybody. But yeah, the mothers of the church is what helped me, baby. You're right. They sure did. They didn't talk about me. They pulled me to the side. They gave me everything I needed to show me how to be the woman of God that I am today. To be discreet and modest. And honey, I know how to. Me and Jay know how to be cute and discreet. We keep your attention over here. If you wandering off, that's already in you. Cause you a cheater. Anyway, go ahead, Greg. I'm done. I'm gonna drop my mic. I'm gonna tell you. You know, you talked about people continually choosing wrong and not wanting to accept responsibility. I'm gonna tell you what happens a lot of times with people. People continue to choose the wrong man and the wrong woman. It's a very, very easy reason. We we lean and rely on these so-called experts to help us find a man, help us find a woman. But here's the problem. I cannot help a woman find a man until that woman has discovered the woman. I cannot help a man discover a woman till that man has discovered that man. If you don't, again, you don't know who you are. If you knew who you were, then you would understand what and who is for you if we really understood who we were you know again you know shakespeare said that play to our own self be true we don't know how to do that because we're spending all of our time we need we need these relationship coaches to justify our bad behavior come on we, we need these individuals to to tell us that we're right and that they are wrong the truth of the matter is it is not hard to find a man. It's not hard to find a woman. It's not hard to find a good man or a good woman. But find the right woman, the right man, is the question. Only you know what is right for you. But see, but see, we need these 10 steps to find Mr. Right. You know, 100 ways to please a man. It ain't no 100 ways to please a man. <laughs> If we wasn't on this Christian platform, I'd tell you in the three of them. I can't <laughs> say it on here. <laughs> but Help us we, pass we, we are, we are <laughs> I really want to say it, but I can't say it. <laughs> but we need all these steps to, take to, to do these simple stuff. Let me tell you something. Big Mama didn't have no problem finding no man. She sure didn't. Granddaddy didn't, didn't have no problem finding no woman. We're talking about being presentable as a man or a woman. Right. First of all, e even Naomi told Ruth, throw a little makeup, a little perfume, and go on to the threshing hole. Where he at? You understand know what I'm saying? Now, again, now I'm not telling anybody to go find your boy. I'm not saying that. Just making a point about being presentable. But even for men, Put on more than jeans and a white t-shirt and some Timberlands. If you're going out with this woman, be presentable. Get yourself some blazers. Put on a nice pair of jeans and some nice loafers. A nice button up under that blazer. Look good. But we are we are presenting reflections of men, reflections of women. But we have not learned to be what we claim that we are. And we also this, we also don't know how to decipher a diamond from a cubic zirconium. You talk Wait, about these, these high quality men or high quality women. We are ascribing people who have a lot of money 
are people who look like success as high quality or high value. But the truth right. of the matter is that does not determine if you are high value or high quality. Again, I ascribe what is valuable to me. Just because you look a certain way or act a certain way, that does not make you high value. Your high value comes from where? Your character. Where is your character rooted in? Because if you've got great character, let me tell you, I don't have to tell you to treat folk how you want to be treated. If you got good character, I don't have to tell you, you need to make sure you hold the door for her. Because you already know that. If, if you are a woman of good character, when I open your door and let you in my car, by the time I get to the other side of my car, you should have unlocked my door and pushed it open. <laughs> but those are the kind of stuff that we do not talk about because we call that stuff old school. No, no, no. no. That's called chivalry, being a gentleman, being a lady. But again, we don't want to be ladies and gentlemen because you got too many women out here. You don't want to be a lady. Pardon my French. You want to be a bad bitch. That's what you want to be. And we're passing that around. And I'm like, what's, what's wrong with you? W when did we start living in a world where it's okay for women to talk to each other with the B word and you answer to it? No, no. Big Mama told you a long time ago, when they call your name, then you answer. Because if you're giving women a permission slip to use the B word to you, guess what? That man ain't going to sign it too and call you one too. Now you are offended. But you have taught him how to treat you because he has seen you respond to that. So what he is doing is that he's doing what you respond to. But we don't realize how toxic we can be, even as saved individuals men and women and men we're no better sometimes because sometimes we are calling each other you know player why you asked it? i ain't no player no my name is gregory now you can call me dog whatever call me player uh -uh. but we are answering the things that that's not who we are who we need to be but we don't realize it's having a major effect on your perception of you and other folk perspective of you when they hear the word player, they see you and they see player. Go ahead. What's up, Pippin? Come on. That's what I'm saying. So we got to get back, ladies and gentlemen, to first of all learn what is a lady? What is a gentleman? And it's not, for men, it is not simply about understanding how to open her door. Know how to open her heart. You open her heart as a gentleman by paying attention to her idiosyncrasies, paying attention to what she is not saying, paying attention to her body language, listening when she speaks, taking her to see that movie that she mentioned last week, taking her to see that play that she mentioned last month, pay attention to what she is saying and what she's not saying. No, you can't read her mind. But the more you spend time with her, the more that you are around her, know how to read her. Know how to play off of her body language. Make her the focus point of your attention. And if you're at a point where you're saying, I want to seriously date her, do not be one of these men that she has to complain. You don't respond to texts in a timely manner. You never call her. You never initiate the date. Don't text her WYD. Call her and say, Kylie, I want to see what you're doing uh, next Saturday. You know, I, I, I made some reservations at, you know, Shea Josephine's, your favorite restaurant. Just want to know if you're available about 7 o'clock. And after that, we're going to go here, Lauren Hill. You you know, you down? Yeah. I don't um, you. I need to be ready. Um, I'm, what color you wearing? Cause um, come on, you know? <laughs> heels are black. You do not want to hear me texting you. 
W-Y-D. Uh-uh. You don't want to hear that. You don't want me to call you a plan with some action. And my thing is this for the women. I'm going to close with this. This for the women. Once you get in that relationship and you feel safe and secure, every now and then, it's up to you to pay. Come on. Oh, now, I said in, in the relationship. I ain't talking about dating. Nope. We're in this relationship. Together. So you feel secure. I'm your man. You're my woman. We have the big C word, commitment. So sometimes you plan the date and you pay. The doors of the church are open. Reciprocate. Will there be one? Will there be one? It's going to be quiet. Ain't nobody walking to the front after that. Dang. Will there be one? Will there be one? Listen, I got us an inbox question. I'm not going to say any names, but I got us an inbox question. Listen. So the question is, okay, hold on. I'm going to go back to my inbox, y'all. Sorry. Come on. I got I got a lot of stuff going on in my inbox. You know, this new haircut. I love it. Thank you. It's speaking to me. They just say in the DMs, huh? <laughs> I love the bomb, man. Thank <laughs> you. I thought I thought I'd be mature. That, that asymmetrical. I see it. Come on, I see the asymmetrical. I see it. Yes. <laughs> okay, let me stop. Okay, so listen, listen, you guys, listen. Okay. If you're single and safe, waiting is masturbation of sin. Jay, you yes. answer first because we know Greg gonna touch on it. He's about to throw this a ball. This is about to be a hit. Run. Go, Jay, answer. So whether you're single and saved, whether you're single, unsaved, masturbation is a sin. The reason why masturbation is a sin is because of what it requires of you to perform that act. Masturbation is an act of lust. It's an act of perversion. And so even the most innocent of people that are masturbating, um, it will take you to a place in your flesh that is, that's what creates the sinful nature. And what is sin? Sin is simply whatever it is that separates us from God. So essentially it's not worth it. Um, you may feel good for the moment, but again, what are you having to do? What are you having to sacrifice to get that? Um, I know for me personally, now let me, let me backtrack a little bit. Single and saved doesn't mean you're not going to have desires. You're human. So you're going to have desires. You're going to want to have sex. It, it's the way that we were created. I have asked God, why, sir? If, if I can't, then I don't, I don't want to have the desire. But our human nature, we're going to have that desire. So it's now a, a, a matter of how you choose to channel that desire. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what is she doing? <laughs> um, how you channel that desire. And it's also what you expose yourself to. The Bible tells us to guard our ear gates and our eye gates. And so when you are single and when you're saved, especially, it is very wise to be very careful what it is that you listen to, what you expose yourself to, et cetera. Um, I like R&B, but if I'm feeling a certain kind of way, I can't listen to weak in the knees because I'm going to get weak in the knees and I'm going to call and be like, how are you doing? So, certain you stuff, listen, that's the song. Certain stuff you just don't listen to, certain movies you don't watch. If there is a, a sex scene, me personally, no, I'm not four years old but I'm not going to watch it. Why? Because it's going to trigger something in my mind that's going to then cause a desire to come forth and I'm going to want to act on it. So again, yes, it is a sin and it is because of what it requires of you to perform the act. That's whether you're touching yourself, whether you are using toys, um, watching pornography, all of these things plant seeds. The seeds that we want to plant in life are those that are going to grow and cause us to be productive. If we start doing these things, um, pleasing ourselves sexually, those are the seeds that we're going to plant, lust and perversion. And let me close with this. Um, when you give the devil, when you give the enemy an inch, he will take a mile. So whereas that may seem like a small act, I guarantee you that 
what pleases you, I'm just going to say last month, it's not going to please you the next month because at some point it's going to require more. It may start with, I'm just touching myself. The next month, you may need a movie. The month after that, you may need a toy. It's going, that desire and that it's going to keep growing because you won't have the ability to consistently please yourself. So I would not recommend um, masturbating. And that's it. That was a great answer. Um, well, so on that note, I got somebody making some angry faces, and I don't know who it is, but I don't know why they're mad, but it's the truth anyhow. And it might not be the place for you, because, hey, you know, we're going to tell the truth and shame. Well, the sometimes, sometimes the truth hurts. You know, people don't want to hear the truth, because I was talking about this to somebody else the other day. The reason why people don't want to hear the truth is because truth comes with an obligation. Once I am informed, then I I feel like I have this obligation to do it because I know. And so if they're angry, it's because you didn't want to know, but now you know. So inboxes if you need prayer. Um, but can help you toys up and just wait on God. I was celibate for 10 years. Was it easy? Absolutely not. But I wasn't masturbating. I wasn't touching myself. I wasn't watching any... Um, pornography i didn't have any toys completely celibate so you can do it god is a keeper you can do it if you choose to there's choices again doesn't make it easy but is it possible absolutely okay so here's what here's what i want to touch and i'm gonna let greg have it he can take the baton one of the things i know about um lust i'm gonna tell you something about lust lust will take you, like you said, to places that opens up doors where you keep attracting people who see you physically, but they don't want to know you on a deeper level. So you're letting off. Remember I told you why I started the fragrance of a woman? Because I wanted to know what was it about me that kept getting, kept getting me uh, I kept get, attracting the same type of men. They just were packaged different. So I'm put you like this. I like these things right here, right? You see them? Oh, yeah, those are good. Mm -hmm. So they got them in Parmesan. They got them in other flavors, right? Mm -hmm. So what that mean? It's still cheese, dried cheese. It's just different flavors, different packages. What am I doing with them? Well, it's the same spirit, just different packages, different flavors. So he might be dark skinned at this time. He might be all the way supposedly saved, but he still got that same spirit on him where it's flesh. And I'm attracting these fleshy type of men where all they see, can I say it, is 36, 24, uh, and might be 42 now because I'm a little thicker in the hips right now. But you see this body, right? But you forgot that she's anointed. You forgot that she's a prayer warrior. You forgot that she's an entrepreneur. You forgot that she's a businesswoman. You forgot that she's an author. You don't see nothing else but 36, uh, 24. I'm lying. I ain't 24, y'all. I'm sorry. Pray for me. I need to be delivered. I want to be 24. I'm speaking it. So it was. But and these hips. And so now uh, you find yourself in this position because why? Because I've been playing with myself. Let's just put it out there. I've been touching myself. I touch myself. And so, you know, don't you touch me on the inside parts. What movie did that come from? Love it. <laughs> All right. You just touch me on the inside parts. I'm hecking booty, y'all. Don't, don't. <laughs> Do you hear me? So it's like, but I'm attracting the same type of man because I have not changed my aroma. I have not gotten those things, the clutter out of my own personal closet. I ain't got me together, y'all. And at some point, I got to get me together because I wanted to. Insanity is what, Greg? Doing same, doing the same things the same way and thinking that you're going to end up with a different result. Yeah. 
Can I tell you about insanity? Insanity was when I was on powder cocaine. Now, you know, I got no problem telling about that in my 20s. And I kept thinking that I could get high. And this time, I'm not going to stay up all night. This time, I'm going to leave the club. This time, I'm going to go home and be with my kids. This time, I'm going to go home and I'm going to actually uh, I'm gonna actually stay home. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be able to get high at home. The insanity of was until I had dealt with the fact, and I didn't know this until... I got all the way saved, all the way delivered 20 years later that I was suppressing pain from my father dying, from being rejected from my family, from being rejected from my children's fathers in plural, um, rejection that I had never dealt with from high school, rejection that I had never dealt with from elementary school through junior high school. Um, the, the thing that I... People who I thought were my friends were not my friends. And they, and the list goes on and on. So I kept trying to medicate these emotions. And then when I became an adult, because I had not matured, so now I'm on drugs. And then I'm on these drugs. And now I'm being um, promiscuous. And because I'm being promiscuous, but can I tell y'all something about my behavior? Can me from having HIV and other deadly diseases. When my heart was stopping, okay, and I said, God, if you save me, I'll serve you. I still had the residue. So now I'm saved, but I got to get the residue of the promiscuality off of me. So, of course, I'm saved. Of course, I'm in the church, but I still got these desires. Because, I frankly, I don't have four kids for no reason. Okay, now, I've got these desires. I might not be doing it a lot. But I'm doing it. Can I be honest with y'all? Mm -hmm. This is about being real, right? Yeah. When I was five years in, I went under my bed. I had two big boxes of porn. I had at least two shoe boxes full of toys. You hear me? But I was having uh, nightmares. And I was being pinned down by incubus and succubus. And I was being molested in my sleep every other night. And I couldn't figure it out why until God, the Holy Ghost, he said, nothing can snatch us out of his hand. And if he said, deep calls unto deep and iron sharpens iron. So because I kept going to church and I kept reading my Bible and I kept praying, I'm going somewhere, y'all, because it still has to do with masturbation. You hear me? When I finally got delivered was when I remember the Lord woke me up. I am my sleep at five o'clock in the morning because I used to go to prayer. And I remember I had just, baby, they had did me a job. I tell you, them, dog, them demons did me a job. They had both had had me. And when I was in tears, because I felt so violated because I couldn't move. And God said, get rid of that. I said, what? All of that under your bed. Go underneath the mattress and get that spare one, too. And that was when I knew masturbation was going to get me nowhere. And those toys carry spirits. And when you open up those doors and those portals, and you and you you talking about, I want to be saved, but you in church. And then it's like, but you keep attracting, you attracting the same type of man in church because he ain't all the way delivered either. So now y'all both having sex, going to church, shouting, talking about this going to be my wife, this is going to be my husband. And the guy's like, nah, this is a bunch of mess and lust. And I'm about to tear it down because I didn't, I didn't, I didn't create this. This, this is not my will. And before I, I got a, I got an assignment for your life. And before I let the devil come in and steal your life, I'm going to get you delivered off these drugs. You're going to get, you're going to get all this porn and all these toys about your house. And then you're going to serve me. I see your heart. So I hope that answers y'all questions from a real perspective testimonial. If you're having nightmares and you having sex, you're doing orgies and all of that, honey, that ain't no dream that's real. You waking up as a man and your hope, you you wet like you was a kid. See, them demons didn't care about y'all being boys. Them demons didn't care. They was molesting you when you was a boy. You wasn't having wet dreams. You was being raped in your dreams by demons. That woman wasn't real. It was a demon. That man ain't real. That's a demon. That ain't your husband. You got a spiritual husband. 
And so until you learn the demonic warfare of these things, baby, don't open them doors. You ain't ready for that fight. Because I'm telling you, when the pastor tell you you done been through some things that would have killed somebody else, somebody else would have... Because I know a lot of people that would left the church and went back to what they was doing. I know a lot of people who never got delivered from what their proclivities of their flesh are. And they running around church still thinking that's what they're supposed to be. Well, okay. I'm not going to argue with you. Because guess what? Y'all know my thing? What's my anthem? I ain't got no heaven or hell to put you in. That's between you and God. All I'm going to do is plant the seed. I hope that helps somebody. Go ahead. Take it out. Greg, we're going to give you 20 minutes. Maybe 15, huh, Jay? Because he is he gonna he gonna take it. Okay, okay, we gonna give it. Okay, so ten, give him ten. Two, give him two. He I two. just give him two. That's he it. Don't there, I, don't, I don't need a lot because I mean, you know what, Dr. J is talking about. Doing. Great, you took the baton, second leg. I'm gonna run anchor and bring it home. Bring it so, home. So, first of all, I agree wholeheartedly with all that's already been said. So, let me repeat that. In addition to the lust factor, I think we have to realize, you know, one of the fruit of the spirit is self-control. And to want to masturbate, first of all, it's a selfish act. So, it, yes, it's lustful, but it also means that you don't have any self-control. The Bible says a person that lacks self-control, like a city that has broken walls. So something within a person is broken when you feel like you have to self-satisfy all the time. Then what you'll find yourself doing is that's where your mind constantly is, constantly is. You want to run across a person who is just as sexual as you. Now what's going to happen is we're going to have chemistry around sexual things. Which will end up us having what? Premarital sex now. And this person will make you feel like you made yourself feel. And for you, that was gratifying. And all that mattered. This is why we misappropriate sex and allow sex to be more important than love. There's nothing loving about masturbation. There can be nothing loving about sex once you strip the sex of the emotion, strip the sex of the intimacy. Now, there's nothing that's intimate about masturbation because it's a selfish act. So now if you're seeking that same feeling and you meet somebody else who makes you feel that way, there is now nothing intimate about the sex that you're having, even if that sex is inside of marriage. Because you have perverse the sex. You have made the sex toxic because the, the thoughts and the feelings around the sex were not divine. The Bible says, I beseech you therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God. That is your reasonable service. If that is your reasonable service to be holy and acceptable, ask yourself, what is holy and acceptable about masturbation? Now, you know why those inside the church sometimes don't see a problem with it? Because of who we're getting our information from. If you ask your physician who is not here to give you divine advice, your physician will tell you masturbation is healthy because you need a release. Now let's think about let's think about biologically our bodies when you have sex or have an orgasm. What is released in your body? Oxytocin, dopamine. Those things are responsible for making you feel what? Good. A good orgasm can make a woman's headache go away. That's the truth. Because those chemicals that are produced make your body feel good, and there's even a healing property within these things. But 
your body was not designed <laughs> to create those chemicals unless you're in the context of having sex with your spouse. Say it. Now, if it's a sex between people who are married, this is happening, nothing is wrong with it. But something is wrong with it, take it out of context. Now, what led you to that was the masturbation, right? You self-gratified and you became addicted to masturbation, which can then lead to an addiction to sex. Because you have what? You're guilty now of being selfish. You're self-gratifying. You cannot wait to the proper context or the right time to have sex. The Bible says don't awaken love to the proper time. You've not only awakened um, love, but you've awakened now lust. And lust looks like love till it's time to sacrifice. Okay. This is what leads people into these bad relationships that are that are what? Very sexual, sex driven, because you are confusing how they made you feel with love. You're confusing lust with love. You became confused because you what? You were self-gratifying, self-satisfying, making yourself feel good. You met somebody else who spoke to that part of you. And again, y'all became what? You're not compatible. You have chemistry. Chemistry will eventually wear off. You confused your chemistry with compatibility. You ended a relationship. Now, good sex is making a bad relationship last too long. You don't want to admit what you're doing because you like the feeling that you have. You like what's going on. You don't. You do not want to stop what you're doing because why? It feels good. So now you find yourself one day what? Now you're lost in a relationship with the absence of love because love was never there because you confused lust with love. Now you're all alone in your feelings, but you're in a relationship, but you're feeling more alone now than you've ever felt in your entire life because all because what? You chased a feeling. Now you're alone, you're depressed, you end up one day getting out of the relationship. And now you have to pick up the broken pieces of your broken heart, all because you confused lust with love. Well, the doors of the church are open. And I just, I had a couple of songs that came to mind. Somebody rocking up the novels. <laughs> it's time. Giving you my own pleasure. But you know what, too? Dr. J, Dr. J made a, a, a point that, that, that will hit me in my heart when she said that certain things, certain sex scenes, that if she knows it's coming up, ain't a good idea for her to watch it. Let, let me tell you, my, one of my favorite movies, well, you know what? Probably my, my favorite relationship movie of all time it's love zones. I, I knew you were gonna say that. I can't watch love zones. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I be calling somebody with the last name John. I can't. Come on. And you know, I have I have a a, a crush on me alone since a long time ago. And I already know if I ain't in the right frame of mind, pastor or no pastor, I can't watch that movie today <laughs> because this is not the right week for me to watch that. Because I don't care how saved and sanctified that you are. Everybody, from the pastor to the deacon to the trustee to the prophetess, wow. got somebody in their life from the past that all you got to do is dial seven numbers and it's on and popping. Tell well, me I'm wrong. I was just thinking about you. <laughs> You just run across my mind. You just run across my mind. You just run. how we used to. Look, and when and, we used and look, to man, you done called me. Him. You done FaceTimed me. And I'm like, oh, Connie, what you do to your hair, girl? You're looking like 10 years younger. 
and now I'm saying all the right things to you, and ain't nobody else been saying it, and this how we rationalize it. You say to yourself, I mean, you know, but Greg is a good guy. I say, you know what, Connie is a, you know, Connie is a good woman, and and she'll keep this between her and I. But <laughs> does that make it right? <laughs> we'll rationalize that wrong. And, and and make that trip and 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 end up and end up like Donna McClurkin. We fall down. So no 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 wait. No wait. So wait. Guess what I was thinking about. What? I just thought that was God because He wanted me to forget it. I was just singing it in the back of my head, but you said, uh. Well, what was the song? It was the song I was just thinking about. Said, that guy, Connie, saying, saying that she said, stay in the Holy Ghost. Because I promise you. Yeah. God, you got to be honest in the house of God. And these are the kind of conversations. My thing is this. Singles ministries. If you're not having those kind of conversations, you, you just try to hook folk up. Uh-uh. Teach folk how to deal with their urges. Teach for how to deal with when, when 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 your psychology is in warfare with your spirituality. Teach for how to deal with that. That that's some spiritual warfare right there. That's some interpersonal conflict that we're not helping people understand. It is normal for you to battle with different parts of yourself. So let me show you how to win the war. But see, we just got folk. We want to give all these thank you Jesus sermons, which is wonderful, but you better tell people how to deal with real life. You better teach people about their biology, about their sexuality. And my thing is this, with these young millennials and these millennials' children, we better start having real conversations about sexuality and not just sex. Well, here's, here's there is a reason that people are struggling with, I don't know if I like men or women. This is no judgment. No judgment. He That's touched. real. That's real. He but touched. we're not helping people to understand why this is happening, how this is happening. Everybody is not claiming to have been born gay. Everybody ain't saying that. Some people are coming off of multiple heartbreaks and they are turning to the opposite sex because they feel like that sex will not hurt them. Or, or it's coming from this. Perverse sexual acts. It's coming from masturbation. It's coming from having threesomes. Uh-oh, uh-oh, don't say now it. Your, now your woman like what that woman did to her that you don't know how to do. Now you find yourself, your relationship now in trouble because she has what? Experienced something that she never experienced with you. Now she's running back to a feeling where she'll confuse herself if she's not careful and that lust will look like love. But there's no sacrifice in that. This is why small stuff that we think is no big deal, it is a big deal. It is a big deal if, if, if you have a pornography addiction. It is a big deal if you have a, a, a masturbation problem. That's a big deal because you have no self-control. And if you have no self-control, you will lead yourself down a road that you can't get back from on your own because you don't know how you got there. You don't know which roads you took to arrive. So you definitely can't get back home by yourself because you know how you got here. Now you're praying to God, you're asking God, well, how did you allow me to come to this, to this past? You did that. You had these experiences. You told yourself, I'll just try it. You, you took yourself out of the company of individuals that well, your accountability partners. You took yourself out of the safety of dealing with individuals who might understand you 
on a spiritual level and you settle for individuals who only understand you on a worldly level. But nobody's in our life to call us out. Nobody's in our life who can impart wisdom. Because why? Because Big Mama 40. Big Mama used to be 60, 70. But we got these babies, raising these babies. There's no wisdom to pass around. There's no knowledge, no understanding. And people are going down all these different roads. They don't know how they arrive. They don't know how to get back. They don't know how to heal themselves. They don't know how to fix this. And now what happens is they get in a state of what? Depression. Now you're depressed and you really don't know how to get back now because you're depressed and now you are ashamed because you have guilt now about what you know is wrong. But you don't understand why you cannot stop doing this because you have an addiction that is psychological, is spiritual warfare that you don't know how to break. Now these millennials, what? What's the one place they're not coming? The church. The church is where you learn how to deal with this stuff. They're not coming to church. Why? Because the church is not speaking to that need. The church is telling me what? That Jesus saves. Yes, he does. But what else does he do? Sometimes our, our salvation can be a distraction to our liberation because we thought all it took is salvation. That's the first step. But we have allowed talking about salvation all the time to distract people from knowing what else there is. Sorry, so you I'm cannot sure. talk about liberation because the Bible says that what the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. If you don't want to talk about liberation, then how can folk get set free? <laughs> Weird. You know, how can, you, how can you be set free and delivered if we're not talking about how to set folk free? We're not talking about sometimes, sometimes we don't have enough Holy Ghost on the inside of us because where the Holy Ghost needs to be, something else is. If, if, you, if you have a cup, like an empty cup, and like this cup is a fourth full, right? Well, there's something already in here. If I tried to pour something else in here, it wouldn't be able to hold the full capacity of that thing because something already in there. And the reality is, as, as people, we got so much stuff on the inside of us that we don't know how to empty out so that God can fill us up with the right thing. That that is what's leading folk down that pathway of destruction. We, we don't know how to get back. And sometimes we don't want to come back because it feels good. I'm happy, but you have no joy. When that happiness fades, then you will not know what to do. I'm done. You done? Listen, I know, Jake, Jake, I'm going to let you say something. Y'all forgive me. My tablet went dead on me. I'm so glad that the live didn't die. I, that's the first time that's ever happened. Y'all know I'm professional, child. Woo, I just about lost my mind. I was like, please. Please don't let it be messed up. Because he was talking so good. So I'm glad y'all caught it. I forgive me, you guys. That, right. No, it's like that was getting good for me. So um forgive me, you guys. Can go ahead, Dr. J. Um, Pastor G pretty much covered it. There's a couple of words that he said that I wanted to highlight. He talked about um masturbation or sex outside of marriage and, and talked about and so that's a powerful word because oftentimes we attribute addictions solely to like drugs or to alcohol, but um, addictions are real and it is and um, and I, I missed this one. I, I want to thank the person. Who, that me? A part of 
trying to come to terms is is that honesty. And so to even have the courage to even ask that type of question is a lot in itself because it means you know that it was it was on your mind. But nobody is perfect, you know. And um, you know, Pastor G, I, I can't say the church is ever going to get away from it, but I can say that this facade of perfection is not saving anybody, and it's not helping people want to come to the church or come to this God that we say we serve. We're so busy wearing white and, and carrying big Bibles and, you know, marching to the front and looking holier than thou. Yeah. But who is that helping? Because yeah. the people that were walking past to get to the front and get to the pulpit or, or where have you, these are the people that are struggling with addiction and with masturbation and fornication. And like uh, Pastor Greg said, um, identity issues and and you know just different things. So we've got to get away from this facade of perfection and really help the people. And it is conversations like this that this is what helps because people have the opportunity to ask the questions and to get the information with the things they struggle with. The reality is everybody has a struggle. Everybody has a thing. Everybody has something that they can't get over. But if we can't be honest and we can't be transparent with ourselves, then this whole thing is for naught, you know? And I don't mean the dialogue. I mean the whole thing, the, the walk with God, the, the salvation, all that. It's for naught if you can't be honest and you can't be transparent. So I'm just glad that we have this platform. And thank you, Dr. Constance, for just being consistent. For one thing, with being obedient to even offer this platform. And then just be consistent because these are the types of things that help people. So if they never respond, if they never, you know, inbox a question, if they never put up a heart, you know, if they never acknowledge that they're watching the live, I truly believe still that these are the types of conversations that are helping people because they can hear it, they can see it, and they can hear it. I yield my mic. I want to, um, I don't know, can you hear me? Yeah. Can y'all hear me? You can. So, for I know that this was impactful. Let me tell you why. Out of, out of the year we've been doing this, I've never mm -hmm. went dead on my tablet, number one. Um, I've never ever had an um, an echo, anything you know, technical, because I take pride in doing everything as a service rendered unto God. I try to do my best mm -hmm. to offer a classy platform, but also to just, Give, you know, do everything as a service, bring it unto God. And even in these conversations, I want to be transparent because people don't get delivered. They don't get healed and they don't get set free. And oftentimes it's like this. I remember when I was struggling in addiction, I can remember I have friends and they'd be like, okay, well, Connie, you know, we can only pray you so much. When are you going to stop? Yeah. You know, you got to want this for yourself. And what God laid on my heart about conversations was just that. I'm a relationship God. Thank you, Father. I want a relationship with my children. Mm -hmm. um, you said it. I We are in the world, but not of the world. And so being, doing our best to try to stay saved in a world that's full of all type of windows and doors and opportunities and, you know, social media has made it impossible almost to keep your children children like they want to rush them to grow up um there is no there are no boundaries anymore and so mm -hmm. the things that we struggle with are like i put you like this it's it's like a it's like a, a ice cream cone compared to the banana split they offer i mean it's it's a plethora of sinful things that they got at the touch of a fingertip. Yeah. But what about the body of Christ? I don't care what denomination you are. You can have your skirt on to your toenails. Okay? That thing rise up. We talked about that. That thing will roll up. You, you, can, you can have the best intentions for your children and, and elder the people that you leave them with at church. But do you know nine times out of ten that most of the time... Children are molested by other children that are that are molested by the, the 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 children will lead them into a molestation situation because they're they're used as bait 
I mean, come on now, y'all. Let's be realistic about what we're dealing with. But then let's deal about the proclivities of grown people's flesh. God gave us the desire. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. But what's wrong with it is when we abuse it. Anything done in excess is an addiction. And it is a sin. And so we want to have real conversations. We want to deal with, you know, can I be, can I say this? And I'm going to try to wrap this up because we said we weren't going to do no two hour um, things no more, but this ended up being that because it got real deep. But listen, and people are still watching. Listen, can we deal with the people that stand in the pulpit and probably get um, erect doing that? Wow. Because the anointing is attractive, but it's a different type of anointing. You know that, Pastor. What about mm -hmm. the women that do it too? Men, I mean, come on, let's deal with the true nature of a man and a woman just because you're saved does not excuse you, does not make you exempt from having these natural desires. The issue is that they become perverted when you don't come, you when you lack discipline and self control. When you want to just keep dating, you know it ain't working. I'm gonna do it different, but you still haven't. You still out there trying to have sex before marriage? I want test drive it, Lord. Let me see what it run like. Let me see, see what that do. But you can't see what that do because that's why you're still single. That's why you still don't have a wife. That's why you don't still have a, still have a husband because we lack self control. Yeah. It's discipline. It's self control, and it's like exercising. If you don't do it in repetition, you get no results. You can't practice discipline on Sunday and then throughout the week you're watching porn. You can't practice discipline on Sunday and then you're on the phone on the sex call because, hey, it's there. It's, it's always been there. Sex is the oldest thing. I mean, the oldest thing. <laughs> Prostitution is the oldest institution of a, a working woman since Jesus. Hey, look at Mary. Her name is Mary. And, and her name Mary? Okay. Let's get that out there. And pimping wasn't dead, you know? They had pimps. Yes, they did. So it's been out there. Molestation's been out there. They were sacrificing their children to other gods. Come on. Pedophilia's been out there. They've been doing this since the beginning of time. Whether we want to admit these things, I feel God and I don't want to hurt nobody. So I'm going to be careful. But they've been doing this since the beginning of time. That's why God sent his son Jesus. And so it is up to us to get the help that we need. But to be honest, that we have a problem. I want a husband, God, but I, 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 I want a husband, but you know, I won't stop seeing my old flame because he tapped it right. I just want to get a little tune up. Shut up. Tell your business. I just want to get a little tune up. Let me tighten up. Let me get it tighten up. <laughs> but it don't work like that. God's like, I need you. Forget those things which are behind. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, pleasing, and acceptable unto God. It's a reasonable service. Mm -hmm. Is it easy? No, but is it worth it? From what I can see, Tony D, my girl, still on here, and I love her. Thank you for hanging with us. She's a seamstress, right? She makes lots of wedding dresses. I want me a wedding dress made too. She makes the little the what the things, the boutonnieres, and all that stuff to go to match for the men. All of that stuff. Don't you want you some grooms, men's too, Pastor Greg? I mean, come on. We, I'm not saying that you did anything wrong, and I'm not admitting that I've done anything wrong. That's not what I'm saying here. But this platform is designed for us to all get delivered and get free and be real together and have real adult conversations where we can. We are in the body, we're in the world, but not of the world. So we're trying to work out our own soul salvation with fear and trembling. All of us, none of us are exempt. We are one debacle away from the. <laughs> We are one debacle away from laying at the altar. All it takes is that one thing, like you said, that one phone call. Hey, how you doing? What you wearing? Hey, what you wearing? And so, 
My time has been far spent. Um, yeah. but before you, before you cut it, give me two minutes. <laughs> and this is why. It's only because I I, I want to help some men and women real quick. We never, people never talk about how irrational people can be about sex. Two minutes, I promise. We often equate sex and we say, I want to test drive the car. This is men and women. We don't realize how irrational that is. What, when you equate a human being to a vehicle, what you don't realize is that that was a point in my life where I would lease luxury cars because I had no intention of keeping this luxury car but a couple of years. So when you say you're test driving somebody and you equate that person to a car, you've already said, I don't plan on keeping you very long. Now, if marriage is supposed to be lifelong and you say that you want marriage, but you are equating this person to a car and you want to test out these features, you want to see how it runs, you want to see X, Y, and Z, you've already put yourself and this person at a disadvantage because you're saying that we have no future together. Because when you test drive cars, even when you buy a car, the average person is not buying this car to keep for a lifetime. But marriage is supposed to be for a lifetime. So once you begin downgrading how you see people, downgrading your thoughts, downgrading your beliefs, you are now perverting what should be divine. Because what you're saying now is that you are equating what's supposed to be lifelong and forever to a test drive. See, I'm going to see if I'll take it off the lot. I'll keep it for a couple of years and bring it back. You don't bring individuals back. You, sh you shouldn't, but what are people doing? They're getting married or in relationships. They're breaking up or getting divorced. Why? Because you bring in that car back that you said you wanted to test drive to see if it was a good car for you. Well, the reality is this. If you really want to know who a person is, sex has nothing to do with it. Nothing. You know what trips people up? Is that we get in these dating situations, right? And you tell a person everything to do that you like. That's why you end up liking them because all they're doing is doing what you said you liked. You said you like flowers. You said you like candy. You said you like this. You said you wanted to go here. So I do that. While love language is important, don't tell a person your love language up front. See who that person is and see if who they are, if they are your love language. See if who they are is suitable for you without you telling this person what your love language is. We spend too much time on these dating situations telling people all about what we like instead of telling people and showing people who we are. I do not need to run down my relationship history with you about why this did not work out, what I did not like. Mm -mm. You need to be who you are. I'm going to be who I am. Whatever you will talk about every day, talk about that. Because I am. And let's see now. Bump this chemistry stuff. Let's see <laughs> if we have compatibility. Let's see if the essence of who you are is compatible with the essence of who I am. Let me see if your femininity speaks to my masculinity. Well. Let me see if you look like a diamond. Well, are you a cubic zirconian? Let me see if you are who you said you were, or if you are what you appear to be, or if you are what you look like. Because see, many of us are settling for a reflection of a man, reflection of a woman, but they're not a woman. They're not a man. They're not a diamond. They're a cubic zirconian. They, they might be successful in business, 
but their character is poor. He may have a lot of money or, or a lot of currency, but no character. She may have appeal to your sexual nature, but well, does she appeal to your spirit? Well, you know what I'm saying? Again, I'm in here. Gentlemen, get past, get past who can find a virtuous woman and learn what a virtuous woman look like. When your heart can safely trust in her and you have no lack of gain, what that means is that the right woman will come into your life and multiply what you've already started. Women, look for a man of valor. An Ephesians 5 man, a man of valor, a man who's working on something, a man who has found his worth in his work, a man who is building himself. He ain't got to have no PhD. If he does, great. But just a hardworking man, because he might have a GED or OPP. <laughs> but as long as he's working on something and trying to better himself and come up, then he might be the person that God has for you to help be all that he can be. And I'm going to say this, I'm done. <laughs> right. I promise I'm done. Yeah, right. Be careful about where you find yourself in scripture. Stop looking for Boaz. What? He dead. He's dead, but also Boaz was 80. Ruth was 40. That's not going to work in this day and age. You don't want somebody 40 years older than you. So be careful where you're finding yourself in scripture and what you say you want. Because Ruth was a widow. You know what I'm saying? Do you want to go through that? You don't want to walk in, in her shoes to have to then find a king's been a redeemer. You don't want to walk that path if you don't have to. So be careful, even in the word of God, where you, where you find yourself and where you identify. And make sure that this is the path and the journey that God has for you. It might not be. It might be meant for you to have a, a Ruth and Boaz experience. There's a lot to that story that gets misinterpreted and it's misunderstood. So be careful. <laughs> what you really want, what you really want is an Adam and Eve experience. What you really want is for that man to see you and say that you're born in my bone, flesh in my flesh, recognize you. I'm done. I'm sorry for laughing like that, mm -hmm. but my my co our co host is a mess. You you haven't been going into the private chat, I'm assuming. So, <laughs> oh, you know what? <laughs> I didn't see it just now. Yeah, I'm gonna get her. She just made me bust out laughing. I can't help. <laughs> I didn't see it just now. Don't choke. I promise you. Don't choke. Just one. <laughs> just one. Just one. Just one. Just one. I was what did he want? Oh, as who? Shoot. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us. My cash app is running at the bottom of the screen for us. Um, we appreciate you all for staying. We promised that we wouldn't do this this long. We were supposed to be 60 minutes or less, but this was the Lord's will tonight. Um I thank you, Sabrina, for joining me, Lady Perkins. I appreciate you. That's my girlfriend, sister girlfriend from Grace Bible Fellowship from years ago. I love you, sis. Thank you for joining. Um, um, Tony D, she's my seamstress. She made me that booming um, outfit for my birthday. Y'all know. Oh, I say booming. Y'all know I'm old. I just dated myself. Booming. This, you you got to stop saying booming. But proceed. <laughs> <laughs> that was a debacle. <laughs> I'm going to get you a shirt that says debacle, okay? Make sure it's blinking. <laughs> I'm going to be like, you're a debacle. You're a debacle. Uh, you're a debacle. <laughs> no, no, let me stop playing. Um, my Auntie Paula from 15th Street, who I grew up with, she knew me. Ooh, she knew me. She knew me. And this is the new me. And so um, 
I thank you all for joining. Um, I saw a few people pop their heads in. I thank you guys, Madeline, um, late, um, Prophetess um, Carolyn, she joined us. I don't want to name too many names, but I thank everybody for joining us on the dialogue, the conversation. Uh, these are real life conversations that men and women need to have. It was It's basically for us uh, supposed to be, quote unquote, supposed to be stay folks, but you know, we all uh, are work in progress. We're working out our soul salvation with fear and trembling. We're making mistakes, getting back up again. That's all we can do. We fall down, but we get up. Um, we try not to sing Bobby Womack. And if you're thinking slowly now, wait until tonight for Anyway. Y'all know I got jokes. I love y'all. Uh, this is the dialogue. Dr. Constance Cooper is the cash app. Uh, any seed, anything that you send. Guess what? This platform is going to be on my channel, the Divinely Me channel on the Onstage Plus platform. We are on Roku, Apple TV, Google TV, Amazon, and YouTube. Oh, guess what? This is always, if you miss any of these, we've been doing this for a year. The Fragrance of a Woman, the dialogue, the conversation, um, and the author symposium. Hey, I have a YouTube channel. Why don't you go to a Divinely Exquisite 72? And that's on YouTube. Um, hit us up. I'm on Instagram. Um, Divinely Exquisite Ministries, Dr. Cooper. Y'all know where I'm at. We're right here on Facebook. And then on Twitter, I am Lady C. Hey, if you need anything, any prayer, inbox me. Um, give us some questions for the next. We do this every month, you guys. So, um, Next month, we come up with the date. We coordinate our schedule. We'll see you here next month. Hey, guess what? Greg, guess what you get to do? What's up? Take us out in prayer. Let's do it. God, we thank you again for this time of sharing together. We ask you to continue to bless what we're doing, God, that somebody's soul would ultimately be saved, somebody's mind would be empowered, and somebody's spirit would be strengthened. Continue to bless us as a group and also individually, God. Help our endeavors, God, to first put you first, that you may take us into unseen territory and lead us into all truth. Ask you to keep us safe, God, through the rest of the week. Help next week to be productive, God, and strengthen us on this journey called life, that there will be nothing that we encounter that we cannot handle with your strength and your help. Bless those who watch today, whatever they may be going through, Strengthen them in those individual areas. Now we ask you to continue to be with those who will watch the rebroadcast. And if there's ever a question or ever a concern or ever prayer needed, help us to always be willing and able to give a word of encouragement, enlightenment, or a word of prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And if you do not know Jesus Christ is your personal Lord and Savior and you are not saved and you're watching this, Romans 10 and 9 says that if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ was the Son of God and that he rose for you, you shall be saved. For it is with the mouth that you confess and with your heart that you believe. And so, uh, Dr. J, take your phone off you and offer them salvation. Could you do that for your sister, please? Well, you did such a beautiful job, but yes. Yeah. Our Christ, the prayer encouragement, if you've fallen away for some reason, or if you don't know God at all, and you're like, these people on this platform are cool. I want to get to know the God they serve. Inbox any of us. You can find on Facebook or any of the platforms that Dr. Cooper mentioned. And we'd love to pray, pray you through and to lead you to Christ. Falling in love with Jesus is hands down the best thing I've ever, ever, ever done. And he will love you like a mother. So we would love to welcome you to the kingdom to reach out to us if you so desire. Have Man. All right, you guys. We'll put up I put up the flyers typically. I try to do it two weeks in advance, sometimes a month in advance. So we can get this. I think we got a date for August already, but we'll let you know. 
Um, other than that, we thank you guys for joining. You saw the cash app down there, Dr. Constance Cooper. Anything, we'll take it because I always share with my brother and my sister. Hey, guess what? We got a surprise for y'all in September, huh, Greg? We don't know yet, but we'll talk about that later. Anyway, guess what? We love you. Good night. Be safe out there. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Get to church. Watch the day. Lexi would say. Come here. <laughs> love y'all. Have a happy Sunday. Bye.